appreciate you taking some time out to, uh, you know, talk to us, come on the show or whatever. Uh, I know it's been kind of a rough week. Are we say. recording right now? Oh, yeah. I mean, I'm recording. I'm just kind of letting you know I appreciate it. That's all. It's a cool thing. Oh. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much, man. You know, you've been a follower of mine for a long time. And uh, I, I, the good I sort of, I, I had no idea you had a radio show. I just would interact with you every once in a while because sometimes you'd be nice to me and sometimes you'd be kind of a dick to me. And, you know, I try to, I try to, if I notice that someone's following me for like more than, you know, four months and I'm seeing their name, I try to engage with them. I, so I'm happy to be on your show. I appreciate that. Yeah, and maybe sometimes I might have been being a dick. I appreciate you not blocking me on that. Uh, you know, just roll with <laughs> the punches. Wow, who blocks people? How how mad would you have to get about a tweet to block someone? I don't. I mean, like mad. people tweet me monstrous shit, but you know, you just ignore it. Well, I mean, yeah, I've I've been seeing some of it. It's been it's been bad. You know, I, I like this past week has been really interesting because it's been like a case study in the internet, like. And also just like a, a case study in like me sort of my, what I am. Like this is the most, I feel like there is a bizarre amount of attention on me right now that is not merited. Like I'm just some guy who's like trying to write good movies. Mm -hmm. But like I feel like every time I express an opinion, even when I put up that Fantastic Four thing, that was just like for my fans who follow me, who like, like my writing. Like why was that reported on film blogs? I completely agree with what you're saying, but also what is your self-awareness on that? Like is there an idea that you think maybe this will kind of get your name out there more? Or I, Yeah, I think there used to be. I yeah. think there really used to be. But we're talking like three years ago. Yeah. Like, is that when you were labeled the Hollywood's biggest fuckwit? Like, right no, now? that was two years okay. ago. Okay. <laughs> yeah. uh, no, that was that was two and a half years ago, uh, which didn't feel great. Yeah. But you know, I didn't have that coming. I did like a really dumb, dr drunk interview on this couch with my friend Shelby, uh -huh. where I said some shit. But you know, like, even the shit I said in that like got blown up out of proportion. People love. And I've caught myself doing it. That's the most fucked up thing with the internet is that I've caught myself doing it. Is people love not investigating shit, not thinking about shit. Like one of the things I get tweeted every day right now is people saying, what's original about a born Pineapple Express movie? Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm like, you don't know what I meant by original because all you read was a headline. I meant not based on anything. Yeah. And, also, and you know, people took that as whining. You know, I tell you, Jim, it's, it's really interesting. People are so ready and excited to correct me mm -hmm. about the film industry and how I'm wrong. I've been in development now on 21 movies. I've had five movies made. If I'm being negative about something with this great career I'm very proud of, if I'm saying, like, something you don't want to hear... Maybe you should listen instead of just telling me I'm wrong. I mean, like, I'm out here every day, and I'm always, I always try to be there for young writers mm -hmm. and for people who need advice and for people who, you know, are, are trying to figure out what, what, who they want to be in this industry because I recognize that my dad being John Landis helped at the beginning. It hurt sure. in some ways, too, yeah. and it continues to hurt in some ways. Um, but it also – it did – you know, like, it's certainly growing up in L.A. in a filmmaking family. I mean, that's how Joss Whedon got his start. That's J.J. Abrams. That's mm -hmm. all these guys. But no one talks about yeah, that's true. that aspect of them. Man. But to what you were saying, um, it's not like your tweets. It's not like your reaction to the box office American Ultra. It's not like you were saying people just don't get it or pe people are just too dumb to get my movie. But people were acting like that's what you were saying. And my, yeah. cause my thing was, what's wrong with having passion? Because obviously if you make a product, you want it to do well and you want to know – if it doesn't do well, you want to know why. So I didn't really understand – I mean, I guess besides the clickbait aspect, the kind of the reaction to it. Well, also, yeah, you go there and then it's also like, who the fuck is Max Landis? I'm a guy who makes YouTube videos that people like. I mean, like I try to make videos for people – who are fans of stuff I like. I try to make movies for people who are fans of stuff I like and would like. I, I'm not anyone's enemy in like the realest way. And I, I can be a little obnoxious sometimes, but I'm not even really that obnoxious anymore. That's sort of an, an old thing because I was sort of insecure about being 
in, in the spotlight and I kind of wanted it and didn't want it. I'm sorry, is this like a therapy session? Your question was, why do they do this? And the, the answer, as far as I can tell, because American Ultra ultimately is not a movie for everyone, but some people are gonna fucking love it. I'm very proud of it. I'm not out there saying it's a piece of shit. I'm very proud of that movie. I think yeah. it's a lot of fun. It's kind of, it's pretty close to my script, but people don't like this is a movie for some people in a wide release. It was marketed really poorly. A lot of people tweet me saying they didn't even know what it was or that it existed. Mm -hmm. That's not good. Yeah, yeah. It just, the, the, reason, the reason I posed those questions to the internet, stupidly thinking, I just wanted, I just wanted people to really think about the fact that I'm out here being a writer who has made my bread and butter on selling things, on not taking assignments, and selling things that were my own idea. And that's the old way people used to break into the film industry. And it's getting prohibitively hard to do that at any kind of big budget level. Yeah. And when I say that, you don't get to say, oh, but X Machina. Because mm -hmm. X Machina was made with a tiny budget, super nuanced, not by the film industry, in this very nuanced way, by a, an established writer. That's mm -hmm. not, when I, when, I, when I express concern about these things, I just wish people understood that I wasn't con expressing concern for me. I'm happy for the most part. I don't like all the people saying I'm a whiner and like an asshole, but like, I love my, my followers. I have good times with them. I love talking about comics and wrestling with people. I'm very happy as a writer. I'm doing my TV show now. I have two more movies coming out. Uh, my, you know, I'm, the only thing that bums me out is this divisive, narrow-minded reaction to things i guess i don't know i'm just rambling well it, no no it, i because i agree with that and i saw it more as if i made a project and it wasn't received well or not received well or didn't like you know kill it you want to know why i, I did well, think yeah, that was weird they hate anyone who's they hate anyone who's complaining the, yeah. the truth about the internet is it's a bunch of complainers, yeah. me being one of them, or a bunch of complainers, yeah. but then the second someone else complains, we all go, shut up, you should be lucky. But to answer your question, I think the marketing of American Ultra didn't really portray what it was. I don't know if you've seen it, but it, they showed it as like a stoner movie. Yeah, I only saw it from following you on Twitter. I didn't really see the poster or the ads anywhere. I got to see it because you were tweeting them. Did you enjoy it? I hope it's okay yes. if you didn't. No, no, I, 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 I absolutely did. I don't want it to come off as because you're here that, you know, I, I'm blowing smoke. No, it's a, it's a funny, good movie. It's romantic, and some of the action's really cool. Yeah, it's got some dark comedy. It's got some good gore, and yeah, the, and uh, I, I think the actor, the cast is great. I, I will say, and I've seen a lot of people um, comment this as well. For some reason, there is this backlash. I don't know why Jesse Eisenberg has the backlash. I kind of get it for Kristen Stewart a little bit, but there is this kind of, I don't know, uh, people don't want to see them succeed or something like that. I've seen a lot of comments on that. Which, by the way, super sucks because they're two of our only young actors who, are, who, are, who have made a name for themselves, and we're still, the studio system's still relying on these fucking old A-list actors who don't open movies anymore. To, to say something about fucking Kristen Stewart and Jesse Eisenberg, the reason we chose them is because we wanted to do an action movie with real actors. And we wanted to give Kristen especially a chance to kind of reinvent herself in a bigger movie. Yeah. And Jesse too, both of them have never played characters like this. Yeah. And they're, I mean, like, again, it's my movie, so maybe I'm biased, but I think sure. they're great. I mean, and so it, it, it comes down to this like qualitative point of marketing I don't know, man. I, if the truth is, it still made a lot more money than most independent movies. Mm. I'm not disappointed with the reception of the movie yet. I, I, you know, we still haven't released internationally. And the truth is, I like the movie. True Romance, when it came out, got critically reviled and made no money. The Big Lebowski, when it came out, got critically reviled and made no money. Fight Club, when it came out, got critically reviled and made no money. Yeah. And the truth is, I'm not comparing my movie to any of those in any way but one, which is that my movie is more than one tone. And that makes it hard for a general audience and good for a specific audience. 
Well, I, I will say, I mean, for, for fair fairness, then, we do have a listener. Uh, he's an FBI agent in Hawaii. <laughs> His name's Tom Simon. This is real. And I'm putting him on blast because he didn't like your movie. And he put on his, but I want you to, I want you to give him a message because his post was total garbage. Don't bother. And this is, this is a grown man. I have nothing bad to say to him. Everybody has opinions. All right. That's fair. uh, It's, it's, you can't, as a screenwriter, man, first of all, you're a little separate from the movie, no matter what, sometimes a lot separate. Mm -hmm. And second of all, if I got mad because people didn't like my movies, I kill myself. That yeah. would I would I wouldn't last a day. I'm never mad for people's opinions. The thing that made me that I felt the need to speak up about was the fact was a market thing. Yeah. You know, it had nothing to do with people's opinions on the movie. I know I like it. Feel free to hate it as long as you go see it. Well, as long, you know, uh, <laughs> well you know, I, I uh, would maybe as a favor to me if you could just say fuck Tom Simon. I'm not going to say fuck Tom Simon. Well, Did I just say, say it? Yeah, I'm not going to say it. You got it. We got it. That's good enough. <laughs> the thing I want to talk about, you mentioned wrestling too. What part of you does enjoy playing the heel though? Because there has, as a wrestling fan, you must kind of enjoy some of these people that just call you a Hollywood douchebag or try to write you off or give you shit. There has to be kind of a playful happiness to that, right? There is and there isn't. There is sometimes. Mm-hmm. If someone says something really stupid to me uh that's fun to just go after them and say a bunch of sh- stupid stuff back to them I, recently uh some rando on the internet was like uh was like your movie's a piece of shit and you're a piece of shit to stop whining or something yeah yeah it was dumber than that it yeah. was like maybe if like ugly jesse eisenberg it was some stupid thing <laughs> but i i was like okay you and i chose them and i told them <laughs> that they make videos of themselves jacking off on a naruto body pillow mm-hmm. that are sold to their father whose father betrayed america in world war ii by working with the nazis i like i, I never sincerely engage with them because you can't yeah you know these these people don't know forget being a heel i don't like being disliked if anything all i want to do is inspire people to love stories, whether that means watching TV, whether that means reading more books, reading more comics, talking about stories. Stories inform empathy, they inform the way we view our lives, and it's the most important thing in my life is trying to get my stories out there because they're all trapped in my head, and if you don't tell your story, then it's just trapped in your head. Yeah. So I don't like being disliked. If I could be a less divisive figure, I'd be happy to be. Mm-hmm. That said, if you're gonna come on my Twitter and like, say some dumb shit to me. Yeah. I know you think I'm not a person. I know you're not expecting a response. I know you think you can just say this, hoping to sting someone you'll never know. And you know what? I'll just come after you. I'll retweet creepy tweets you made to he- Haley Atwell. I'll get a posse on your ass. I, I, I just, well, do you feel that know, in your, <laughs> in your experience by responding, does that typically make them feel validated or does it scare them away? Both. It depends. You know, they're individuals. I mean, that's why I almost never respond. What happens, what often happens is I'll respond. If they say something really mean, I'll respond like, that's a mean thing to say. Like, I'm sorry that I bothered you. And occasionally they'll be like, oh, I didn't think you'd actually respond. You're not actually that bad. Like, (laughs) I really like uh, your Superman comic, actually. And I'll be like, why the fuck did you... Tweet me this horrible thing. I, that's, I don't, that's a again, good way to like disarm I'm, them. I feel like I'm bitching about haters. No, I no, I, I feel like yeah. There's a difference between just saying like haters gonna hate and actually you know breaking it down a little bit. But if I feel that's a great way to disarm them because you're right, they don't think of you as a person. You're just a avatar on Twitter. So once you just say, oh wow, I'm sorry that you feel that way, people kind of tend to realize, oh yeah, this is just another person I'm talking to. But and it's, it's weird because, like, Jim, I don't feel – I always say I'm not famous, and now people are getting mad at me for saying that. But I, in my day-to-day life, mm-hmm. I walk around on the street. No one comes up and says, like, hi to me. Mm-hmm. The only time I feel like I'm famous is when I tweet something, and then suddenly it's on a news website. And I'm like, yeah. how the fuck did this even happen, you know? I, That's the, the question, then. In the beginning, was the plan to be a rock star screenwriter? Because... 100% yes, because I didn't understand screenwriting yet. I've always been efficient 
and you know, quote unquote, good at screenwriting. Uh -huh. uh, meaning, meaning that I can finish scripts quickly. My scripts don't make you cringe while you read them. Uh, they're a normal length. I'm good at rewriting, which is really the main job of screenwriting is taking notes. Uh, and I sort of, I sold a bunch in a row and I thought screenwriters deserve more attention, right? Mm -hmm. I thought screenwriters, how come I don't know who wrote Die Hard? Yeah. Like, that's not fair. Yeah. That's not fucking fair. And so, because I didn't initially want to be a director. You know, my dad was a director and I never wanted to compete with him. And my dad told me very early on, like, are you sure you want to try to be a screenwriter? You'll never get hired. It's the hardest job in the world. You get, you're the beaten dog of the film industry. No one appreciates you. It doesn't pay enough. They treat you like shit. You get terrible notes, but then they fire you and replace you. It's the worst. Yeah. You don't want to do this. You do, and my dad didn't want me to be in the film industry for the longest time. And because he said it's too heartbreaking. And he's right. And of course, you know, I, I, it's like, what would you rather do, work at McDonald's? No. You know, you can't, you can't compare it to that. But so, yeah, I thought I want to be seen. I want to be associated with my movies. I want to be out there. I want people to know me. And I want to make stuff that people like. And that was a big mistake in, in hindsight, because now that I've had five movies made, and now that I've been in development on 23 different projects, 20, 22 different projects, 23 soon, I know that the job of a screenwriter is so mechanical and separate from the ultimate thing. I mean, certain movies are very reflective of their scripts. Chronicle is the script in yeah. a way that's remarkable. American Ultra is a little different. You know, like you, you come to realize that calling it Max Landis's American Ultra is nonsense. Mm -hmm. I was there for eight days of shooting where I didn't have any power. It was just me and Jesse rewriting dialogue to, to sound better. But you know, at the end of the day, you're not the rock star. Yeah. You're Moses. You're a guy who comes down from a mountain and says, I have this crazy idea. And then your job, your main job, doesn't take place on a set or at a premiere or in interviews. It takes place in the room where you're writing and in the room where you're trying to sell people. You're a, you're a rabbi. You're, you're a priest. You're selling people faith because you need to get their faith in your crazy idea. As far as like stuff that's happening now, as far as with your Twitter and the think pieces or the articles, do these things help you or hurt you when you are going into pitch and stuff like that? Or does it not even matter? They don't even matter. Yeah. No, no one, no one, the, both the critics, the film insiders, the people on the other side of the industry, you know how people say like, Oh, just because you're not in it, like people get mad. I get mad about this, where it's like just because someone's not in something doesn't mean they can't cri they can't criticize it. Well, the the truth is, no one cares. Like like once you're in these rooms, these people do not care about this stuff. Yeah. Um, and they're smart not to. Mm -hmm. Uh, they just most of the time when I interact with people, my writing and the way I actually am in person speaks for itself. And that's my job. And I'm not, I'm not even really thought of, despite all this reporting of like Max Landis, whiny and whatever, I'm, and I'm not even really thought of as a whiny writer. So it's, I guess not. You know what it hurts is my productivity because it bums me out. These, we ask these questions to everyone we talk to. Um, first one, and this might be a long list, but uh, who are you beefing with? Who am I beefing with? Yeah, who are you beefing with? Uh, who am I beefing with? There's a guy I don't know well online who was Whoa, he answered. rude to me at a Nerf party I organized. <laughs> it was the dumbest <laughs> sense I've ever. And like he he saw the tweets uh, online. He like barely knows me, and he saw the he he saw the the Max Landis is whiny, and he posted that to his Facebook page over there in the cosplay community, the Los Angeles cosplay community. It's like, but there's a lot of people I really love in there, and then some people I don't love. But it, he posted, and he was just being very mean to me. So I guess I'm beefing with that guy. I'm beefing with – who else am I beefing with? Well, hold on. Uh, you said this was at a Nerf party, so did you, like, you know, 
nerf them or something like what no i organize these things uh three times a year that are open to the public uh-huh. and it takes me a lot of time to organize it called nerf war turf war okay which is a, a big nerf war held in griffith park <laughs> and this guy had been coming for a while and then uh i had to do a shoot and my shoot ran over and then there was too much traffic in the park and i was like no one come today it's canceled today and postponed to next week except people a lot of people had already shown up and so i said uh i said shit if you're my friend and you're there because it's public please tell people not to do it today and we'll have the big one so a lot of my best friends left because i'd said it was canceled so like 50 or 60 people left leaving 50 or 60 people who I didn't know. And, you know, they're normally like from 70 to 300 people is how many people are at these. Mm -hmm. And I posted on the wall, like, please don't have a Nerf war without me. That would really make me upset. Please wait one week. Please wait one week because I organized this. I've organized seven of them for you motherfuckers, (laughs) you know, and, and it would really make me sad if, if there were two Nerf wars, and a bunch of you didn't come to this. Just find something else to do today. And this guy on the wall was like, you're not the boss of this. You can't tell <laughs> people to leave. We can do whatever we want. And I thought, you jerk. You complete jerk. And he made everybody stay. So I had to go through all this traffic and a hard time parking. I told my friends to come back. A lot of them did, not all of them. But then we had a great day doing Nerf War, and I apologized to everybody for canceling it. He was right. I was wrong. And I apologized at the thing. I was very bothered. I called him out. I was like, it's fucked up. You did that. Like, you're, you're having my party without me? That seems weird. I recognize that it's open to the public. Yeah. But, you know, I, I organize it. It doesn't seem right. And he then went on the Facebook event after, like, I'd sort of made peace with him and was like, made this super passive aggressive post like well that's what you get for having a tantrum like a baby because we all had such a good day (laughs) and since then and then he was rude to my girlfriend and he was like since then that dude has just been like very aggressive to me and i don't know him so i can't really be mad about it so because i don't know i don't know him well enough even to not like him so the nerf war the nerf war group somehow mixes in with the cosplay community so if you're oh, in a big way well yeah. i have a lot of good friends in the cosplay oh god the nerf war group in the cosplay community it's oh, amazing Lord. what's really the- going on in hollywood is the nerf war and cosplay community <laughs> well the thing is the thing that the, the joke of me as like a public figure is there's this idea of me as like this Hollywood hotshot douchebag guy. And I'm like this complete <laughs> dork. And like, and so it, I'm sorry. It's just, it's always so funny because even within like my cosplay friends, they're like that, like, like their friends who don't know me are like that guy is this and all my comic-con people and all my, like all my friends are total goof offs and weirdos. And it's like, it's it's very bizarre because I don't know. Yes, there was a feud between the Nerf War people and some of the cosplay people. Although I like all the cos most of the cosplay people. It's hard. My Jim, you know what the hardest thing about me to understand as a person is? What's that? That and and I sound really up my own ass right now is that I don't really not like anyone and a lot of people don't like me. So it it comes down to this, like, especially people who've never met me. So it comes down to this, like, ridiculous... Dylan, is this accurate at all, what I'm saying? Yeah. What? Yeah. I I will say you got yourself the next Nerf War because you need to get the Nerf War people and the cosplay people down there to settle this once and for all. I, I got to get them all together. The key of Nerf War is respect. So yes. <laughs> I don't know if I can, I don't know if I'm ready to respect these people with my darts, but no. Uh, what what else? I, that's who I'm beefing with is some guy I don't okay. know well who's being mean to me. And yeah, and, and I know this is, uh, this is the cheesy question and I'll, I'll finish it up because I know you got your dinner here and I don't want to keep yeah, you. Yeah, that's right. Look at how cool yeah. it is. Oh, perfect. Uh, <laughs> 
I just want you to give a message to all your haters. Hey, guys, uh, go see American Ultra. It will still be in theaters for the next week. If all my haters go, uh, we can make a little bit more money. So thank you for uh, supporting Max Landis, giving me time in your day, thinking about me. That means a lot to me. Um, The fact that I have haters is absurd. I'm a screenwriter (laughs) who makes uh, dumb videos for YouTube and writes Superman comics. But the fact that you care enough to tweet me it means the world to me, and just, I believe in you. You're going to get out of your whatever weird relationship you had with your parents that made you this way, but I believe in you, and it's going to it's gonna be good, and American Ultra is good, so please go see it and buy American Alien when it comes out on shelves this November. Nice, nice. It's uh, really going to be a really fun Superman comic, and even if you don't read comics, you just read it and just burn it. Just buy copies and just burn them. Yeah. Just burn them. <laughs> what do you have to lose? Nothing. Nothing. What, are they going to put you back in jail? You're not afraid of going back to jail. You're not afraid of anything. I can't tell you what to do. Sorry. Uh, I enjoy that. On. You got you have a, you have that you have a crazy stare. Um, yeah, and then it's wh- good, right? hey, I really appreciate you taking some time out. Uh, very cool. Uh, I dig what you're doing. So just keep on doing it, man. Have a good night, man. I can't wait to see how they twist the words in this. <laughs> I, 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 you know, maybe, maybe every, maybe my 15 minutes of fame will finally be up. Well, I will just really? we'll lead with the Nerf War in the uh, in the cosplay community stuff. So don't worry about <laughs> it. Oh no! Oh no! I'm in so much trouble with the cosplay community. Goodbye, Jim. Have a good night, dude. See you later. Have a good one, man.